Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and we're going to be talking about buying and selling and what we be doing during Pride Month coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Uh, briefly about me, I'm a pastor and a husband and father, follower of Christ most of all. And this channel is being against the world for the world. It's contra mundum pro mundo. That's kind of the impetus. This is uh, contrary thoughts, contra thoughts, having a taking something in the world and the culture and the church, something like that, and just poking at it and looking at it and trying to turn it over and looking at it from a different angle. Uh, because we live in this world, right? But Jesus says he's overcome the world. We will have tribulation. We have trial, persecution. Uh, not everybody, not all the time, not every single day, not every single um, highest volume or anything else. And it's been happening for centuries and centuries. It's not new. So don't freak out about that. But he's overcome the world. Okay. And he also tells us later on what has overcome the world, but our faith. I know some people like to get a little squishy about that and weird, but we're here for a reason. God didn't just translate us. He didn't just kill us. Um, immediately when we came to Christ and understood we were sinners. So we're here. Part of being here is selling stuff, buying stuff, living, right? You have to buy stuff, right? I'm using a computer. I'm using a camera. Here's a mug. Phones, right? Not to mention all that stuff's kind of optional, technically, although in our day it's harder. But you got to eat, right? You got to buy tomatoes and bread and mayo and frozen chicken and bananas and candy bars, ice cream, everything, right? And so how are we supposed to do this? Because you go to some stores these days and they're just overwhelmingly full of pride, right? It used to be gay pride, now it's just pride because they want to just include everybody, I guess, in some sort of... I, I still don't... I, I think their goal, ultimately, I know their goal, ultimately, is just chaos. Uh, and I'm talking they, meaning like the lefty commies. Uh, who who hate freedom and liberty, they hate democracy, uh, the democratic republic we have, which most of that is bound up in um, biblical responsibility, you know, Judeo-Christian values, you could call it that, I guess, but it's really just God has made the world in such a way, and he's given people a certain level of responsibility to repent and believe, uh, I mean, Acts 17, right, he's made a lot of a time, a season for every nation, uh, day, times of ignorance have passed, that sort of thing. And so, yes, the founding fathers weren't all Christians, et cetera, et cetera. But they recognized that there was a creator. They recognized that we get certain inalienable rights from this creator. So we have to buy stuff. How do we do that? What do we do? Because uh, being from California, myself, although we're in Kentucky now, I've been here for several years. I do pastor a, a church. Um called New Harvest Baptist. Uh, it is part of the SBC. And if you've seen other videos, I'm very much not in line with the SBC in many respects. I am going to the convention next week. I was able to go get to that. So look out for videos on that. I'm going to do some lives, hopefully, and maybe some interviews and some other things as well. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. But buying. 2008, we were in California, was Proposition 8. This was, there's propositions in California. I learned that not every place has that, okay? We did a do in California, and it was about gay marriage. Gay marriage. It still passed. People still affirm that marriage between a man and a woman, this was 2008. Of course, fast forward seven years, and we have Obergefell. Now it's just legal everywhere. And seven years after that, here we are. You know, society is crumbling around us. Now, is this the only reason? No, but it certainly didn't help anything. Uh, but we have to buy stuff. And I keep saying that. Home Depot was one of those companies that came out in support of the LGBT community uh, back in you know, 2007, 2008, 2009. Um, Levi's. Apple Computer. Target. More and more Target, more and more. And we'll look at Target here in a second. But... Some of this, some of it you just can't help, right? And I get it. You know, moms like Target more than they like Walmart. I get it. We try not to shop at Target. I, I don't know if I've bought anything at Target in, I don't know, years and years and years. I just, I boycott Target. Now, people used to, oh, you boycotts don't do anything. Well, that's the same logic to say voting doesn't do anything, 
right? You have a thousand people and 900 people are like, ah, what's the point? There's other, there's 999 other people who cares. But if 900 other people sit out now, a hundred people are deciding what's going on for the thousand. Same thing with boycotting. If one or two people do it and everybody else is like, it doesn't matter, but 900 other people do do it, right? Now you have a thousand people boycotting money talks. And that's why these companies, by the way, they don't actually care about you, anybody LGBT watching or friends and allies. They don't care about your sexuality. In fact, they think it's grotesque most of the time. They won't say that out loud, but how they live their lives is accordingly. But they see large sums of money because we're in this victim mentality, this victim culture. That's why. And so they want to be on the side of the victim because, you know, last numbers were 7% of everybody supposedly is LGBT, 7%. And that's a huge number. And it's probably, probably far less than that. It doesn't mean you don't exist. It means it's far less. <laughs> and there's no sane society that has 93% of people bowing down to 7%. That's nonsense. But why do we have rainbow crosswalks why, and, and sidewalks and, and flags everywhere? And basically, you know, the, the new BLM for a moment was or the new rainbow flag was the BLM. You know, we saw this two years ago. Put it in your window so the rioters, because it's all about an intimidation too. You know, and people getting upset about this and that. But we got to buy stuff. Well, I try not to shop at Home Depot. I go to Lowe's. Now Lowe's probably supports it too, although they're not as out about it. At least to, not to my knowledge. <clears throat> we lived in Louisville, a very a very uh, leftist city, not crazy like San Francisco, but fairly leftist. And, you know, there were some places, especially certain regions and even churches that had rainbow flags. Well, thank you. I now know not to go there, right? Like it's it's easy in one sense, but it's difficult in others because I'm using an Apple computer. Well, Apple's still very much, a, you know, they're woke, right? They're leftist. Starbucks, right now Starbucks has terrible coffee. I don't really shop there much at all, but occasionally during the summer, we'll go get an iced tea or an iced coffee. And, you know, because I want to <laughs> and... There's nowhere else, right? Or we realize, uh, you know, and maybe I'm a hypocrite. I don't know. Call me that. Fine. But there's this here, and we'll just watch this for a moment. Franklin Graham, of course, the son of Billy Graham. And he's here, uh, and he's at a donut shop, right? And the donut shop is supporting LGBT stuff. Now, Voodoo Donuts. Now, again... Voodoo, it's a little weird, right? It's a little New Orleans, Satan magic, whatever. So let's just watch this. This is from Doctrinal Watchdog. And I just want to, I want us, because I know most of who watch are believers uh, and, you know, men and women both and everyday people, quote unquote. Um, I mean, I can, I consider myself an everyday person. Yeah, I pastor a church, but I'm not some special elite person or something. So anyway. Point is, though, to be, I still want to be against even doctrinal watchdog because conflation is going on. And I'll, I'll, we'll look at and see what I'm talking about in a second. So. So, August 5th, 2018, he's in front of Voodoo Donuts, just three years ago, four years ago. Happy Pride from Voodoo Donuts. Gay bars. Oh, how cute. Gay bars. Uh, Fruit Loops. Instagram, is this the same day? It doesn't have a timestamp on it or it's hidden. Look at the Satan donut above. Yeah, there's a pentagram. Okay. Gay bar. He gives a thumbs up. How dare you, Franklin Graham. Let's see. He's wearing a blue shirt. He's got the black hat. Okay, so this is the same place. This is the same time. Blue shirt, black hat. So this is August 2018. That's going to be my guess. It's August 2018. Now, does he have to shop at Voodoo Donuts? No. But it's also just a donut. And we're going to get to this in a moment of what the difference is, if there's differences between this and the guidepost report from the SBC Sexual Abuse Task Force, which I covered this week, earlier this week, if you've already seen that. If you've not, check that out. Um, above. But he says, thumbs up, donuts are good. Now the donuts are probably really good, right? Who doesn't like a donut? I mean, come on, sugary fried dough? Ridiculous. They're so good. <laughs> they are my kryptonite. But 
he's there in August. So it's not Pride Month, number one. Number two, this is four years ago. Did they celebrate Pride then? Probably, right? If it was 14 years ago, probably not. But four years ago, they probably still did. Question is, does he know that though? And do you know that? And do you know that Target is a massive purveyor of porn, <laughs> right? Gay stuff. I mean, this is on the homepage from Target. We have, yeah, I'm not going to get into that. There is dad though. Look at that. Best grandpa, best kid. How do you, wow, wow, look at that. Top. Celebrate dad. Cool. Unbelievable. They're still actually going with gender stereotypes. Target pride. Take pride. 376 products, I guess that's what that is. We got a bag, accessories, jewelry, bullseye background, pets, books, beyond the gender binary. Books sold at Target. Ladies and gentlemen, transgender history. We are family. Red, white, and royal blue. LGBTQIA+. Plus. I thought it was two A's. Anybody help me out on that? Bye-bye binary. Untamed. <laughs> the pronoun book. Oh my goodness. The book of pride. Mason Funk. They both die at the end. What are your words? Your words. What are your words? Honey girl, Kate is waiting. Blah, 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 blah. Invisible, rise to the sun. It's a lot, a lot of books. It's a lot of books. Okay, so, well, I'm not going to buy those books. Okay, right, but you're supporting Target that then is able to produce and or sell those books. So you're still supporting the LGBT community agenda, right? The Alphabet Mafia. Now, there's people that like Chick-fil-A and um, In-N-Out and Hobby Lobby and other Christian organizations that don't care, right? And they're like, I don't care. Celebrate that, whatever. Or they show up there because they are Christians, right? And we see this more and more, especially like on Gab. And I am on Gab if you want. I'm on Twitter, too. Uh, those handles are at the front. <clears throat> but And they're down in the description. But... Gab is all about the parallel economy. And this is what Christians do. We build, right? And so if you don't like Target, don't shop there. If you do like Target or you don't like their stuff, but you still shop there because it's harder and you like their products. Although these days, most products from most places are just garbage. It's really frustrating. I mean, stuff just breaks and rips and tears. I mean, I don't know. Drop a comment and tell me, Does your do your children also destroy stuff? Because mine do. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like it's like, is it the stuff? Is it my kids? Because they're not that rough on stuff, it seems like. But what are we supposed to do with this? Because can we now not shop anywhere? Because I think Krispy Kreme, although, I'm, again, I'm not really going out and getting donuts. I prefer the mom and pop shops anyway. But I'm pretty sure, I've not looked, that Krispy Kreme has done pride stuff, rainbow stuff. No, it's just money. It's just money. And it's funny because a lot of even the activists, the extreme activists, Ha call these people out like oh we see you you know 30 years ago you weren't supporting us 20 years ago you weren't supporting us even sometimes 10 years ago you weren't supporting us but now it's legal it's fine right they don't lose any social capital in fact they gain social capital but again doctrinal watchdog he's conflating these things right it's not june so it's not pride month so i mean again i could see him if he was eating a gay bar but he's not eating a gay bar i don't know who doctrinal watchdog is um he's very uh, he's very John MacArthur-y, like to the T, to my understanding. Very dispensational, uh, premillennial, you know, mock postmillennialists and others. And, and that's fine. That's your belief, I guess. Um, I'm not, I used to believe that. I don't believe that anymore. But, you know, it's just, you know, a lot of the stuff's good. Posted the comment. I have a question for the readers. Have you ever shopped at Home Depot, Target, bought an Apple phone? I mean, Apple phones, right? not just computers, but Apple phones or some Levi's. Well, you're just like Franklin Graham. And I mean that all of these companies are supporting this and have supported, been supportive of the alphabet mafia for years. You are the problem. If Graham is eating a donut is a problem. This is quintessential log and spec scenario. Dr. Watchdog says false. I said, how is that false? Make an argument, please. This was 10 days ago and he didn't reply or just don't be stupid. You know, doctrinal watchdog. 
because you 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 certainly have shopped at these other places and to castigate franklin graham because you know he's franklin graham and he said you know he's the son of billy graham and billy graham said a bunch of stupid stuff because you know it's hard to not say stupid stuff when you live to be like 98 or however old he was uh now i think later on he did either get taken out of context in certain places and also just say dumb stuff like you know people are saved other ways and this and that but this isn't about billy graham this isn't even really about Franklin Graham. This is just about how are we to live. Listen, I think some of it's your own conscience, and don't let me don't let me um, spec and log and put a burden on you, okay? Because here's the thing: we even as taxpayers who are abolitionists or pro life, which they are different, <clears throat> we still support abortion through our tax dollars because Planned Parenthood gets a half a billion dollars each year. This is one thing that Donald Trump pushed against Planned Parenthood for. And got flack. And of course, you know, Christians were still like annoyed at Donald Trump. And it's like, he wants to defund Planned Parenthood. We're already supporting abortion with our dollars. We're already supporting the LGBT stuff with our dollars through all sorts of ways and means too. So that's the whole point. So how do we live? Well, I think it's conviction. First Corinthians 8. First Corinthians 8. This is very helpful. Not exactly the same, but very close. Now concerning things sacrificed to idols, we know that we have all knowledge. Knowledge makes arrogant, but love edifies. If anyone supposes that he knows anything, he has not yet known as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, let he, he is known by God, known by him. Therefore, concerning the eating of things sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no such thing as an idol in the world. And there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom are all things, and we exist for him. Mark that, church. Mark that, folks. For him. And the one Lord, Jesus Christ, to whom are all things, and we exist through him. However, do not all men have this knowledge, but some, being accustomed to the idol until now, eat foods as if it were sacrificed to an idol, and their conscience is weak and defiled. But food will not commend us to God. Uh-oh. We are neither the worse if we do not eat, nor the better if we do. But take care of this ability, liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. If someone sees you who have knowledge dining in an idol's temple, will not his conscience, if he is weak, be strengthened to eat things sacrificed to idols? For through your knowledge, he who is weak is ruined, the brother of those who sake Christ died. And so, by sinning against the brethren and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause my brother to stumble. It's really good. So, what does it say? Well, that's 1 Corinthians 8. Go check it out. Um, and he's saying, there are no idols, but there are people who perceive these things to be idols. Don't eat. Don't ask. It says this in other places too. Don't don't even don't even ask about it. Just indulge in it, enjoy it, because it's food that God made. Right, food's good. So this donut is what God made. It's good. Tastes good. Now it's out and out. So in one sense, it's hard to then say that. So fine, it's not exactly the same. But conscience. If your conscience is weak, and in mine, mine certainly was uh, when I stopped shopping at these places, or as best I can, I stopped shopping at these places. And I really do. Like I don't buy Levi's. I mean. You know, again, I'm not trying to puff myself up, but if if your conscience isn't there, fine, then support it. Because ultimately, like I said, I'm supporting Planned Parenthood to a degree through my own tax dollars. Everybody is. Now, even if it's only a couple bucks because it's $500 million and there's 300 million people, 330 million people, right? It's probably $2, you know, if you want to just get down to brass tax. So this isn't to, you know, completely castigate doctrinal watchdog. It's just, hey, man, this is the log spec. Right. You, 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 you see this and you think, ah, Dr. You're uh, Dr. Graham, you're Franklin Graham, whatever. I don't know if he's got a doctorate. You're eating this. Well, it's not even Pride Month and he's not eating a gay bar. Right. And, and this is four years ago. And do, did he even know? He knows no now, I guess. But you're conflating these things and you're trying to make a point. So I probably, I probably do that, too, sometimes. But the point is, 
we can use the scripture to apply it, these things to our life, right? It's first and foremost talking about idols, right? And that's what it means, the first and foremost context. But then secondarily, how it applies to us. Remember, the Bible isn't written to us, but it is written for us. We do pull from the Bible because it's not just a dead book. It's rather a living book not a living document like some liberals think the constitution is, but rather it's living because of the spirit of God. doesn't mean it changes. It means the spirit of God moves us. So then why is it a problem that guideposts, the people who did the sex abuse task force report, um, is affirming LGBT stuff, right? Why is that a problem? Because, you know, you shop at Target, you know, I mean, Richard, you're just saying it's conviction. You're just saying it's just it's just this and that. You know, it doesn't really matter. Now, in one sense, <clears throat> yes, it might sound the same, but here's where I would make a distinction: because pedophilia is often the end result of homosexual behavior, right? Grooming and the younger the boy, it's just all that stuff, right? And we see this drag queen story hour now, drag queen strip clubs. Uh, I mean, it's just multiple times. I mean, uh, just go watch the video if you haven't already. These people are fine with that and not just fine with it, but supporting it, right? And so supporting a donut shop or buying a hammer at Home Depot or buy a pair of pants that are Levi's at Target or and an Apple phone at Target and you're doubly supporting the LGBT stuff. Okay, you know, at the end of the day, it's conviction, stand before the Lord, right? God judges the world, right? We don't actually judge the world. Now, we do have responsibility. It doesn't mean we don't do anything. And you shop with your dollar. You vote with your dollar. Uh, you have your voice with your dollar, as it were. And so it does matter. And if that's your conviction, then great. That's my conviction, stronger than some others. If it's not your conviction, fine. <clears throat> but it certainly should be your conviction whether or not your children are being reared in this worldview, right? And we see this with government schools, for example. Uh, it should be your conviction whether or not you're having a pedophile babysit your children, right? Or an alcoholic, you know, stay home with a case of beer. I mean, there's certain things that we, we it's a no duh, but there's other things with this because we're shamed into it. And we're, we're told we, oh, you can't, oh, you're a bigot. Just shut up. I don't care. Just shut up. Call me a bigot. That name calling is irrelevant, right? I've been called much worse by someone far better. And so it's irrelevant. Why this is different is that Guidepost is going to now tell us next week, <clears throat> tell us how to address or at least have suggestions on how to address the sex abuse stuff. The same types of behavior they're celebrating with supporting the LGBT agenda. It's a problem. It's a massive problem because buying a donut or a hammer or a pair of jeans or a phone they're not telling you what to do with your worldview. They're not telling you how to discipline your children or how you should work, right? Now, subtly they might be, but at the end of the day, it's not the same thing at all. Not to mention a phone is, you know, a few hundred dollars, thousand uh, dollars, a pair of jeans, 20, 30 bucks, a donut, two or three dollars. This, we gave these people $4 million, $4 million. Now I didn't give any money directly, right? And most people didn't, but it was lumped off from, you know, whatever fund in the SBC. And they decided to do this. They didn't have to do this. Now, did they know this beforehand? I don't know. I really don't know. They might have. And if they did, that's even worse. I hope you found this helpful. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Give me that whole three-piece special. Drop a comment. Tell me how you're doing today. And uh, what your thoughts are on this boycotting um, businesses who are rainbow affirming alphabet mafia and uh, all the rest. So go ahead and check that out if you want. All that to say, y'all have a great day. Be against the world for the world. We'll see ya.